singing, living my faith, living my faith in Jesus above, in Jesus above. I am trusting, confiding in His great love. Oh, hallelujah! From all in his arms. I am living by faith and I feel no alarm. Let's try the first verse. I care not today what the morrow may bring if shadow or sunshine or rain the Lord I know over everything and all of my worry is vain sing it I'm living by faith oh yes in Jesus above and I'm trusting confiding in a square Storm, save from all attacks of the evil one. I'm living my faith. Oh, yes, and I feel no alarm. Can you take us out? The second verse, though tempest be right, obscuring the brightness of life. Sing living by faith Well in Jesus above Oh yes I'm dressed in confiding Oh in his great love Sing the matrix Sing it from To the last verse, our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be over. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond the blessed heavenly shore. Sing it, I'm living my faith. Well in Jesus above Oh hallelujah I'm trust and confide And in his great love Shout it out church say it from all Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the grace of God. It is the protection of God. Amen. We live every day 
amen because our lives amen and we are able to face tomorrow and we will continue to face tomorrow we are living amen under the canopy of his wings as the pastor prepares to come forward let's do that song bigger than anything amen hallelujah let's try the first verse amen Bigger than all the shadows that falls across my path. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all confusion, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Do the chorus. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Oh, bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Try the first verse again. It says, bigger than all the shadows that falls across my path. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Do you believe it, church? Bigger than all the confusion, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Sing like you believe in Him. He is bigger than all my questions. He is bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Hallelujah. He is bigger. Bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Try the second verse. Hallelujah, bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my hands, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Oh, he is bigger. Oh, he is bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I cannot, cannot see. Hallelujah. He is bigger than all my questions. He's bigger than anything. Oh, God is bigger than any mountain that I cannot, cannot see. God is bigger than any mountain. God is bigger than any mountain that I cannot, cannot see. Believe you serve a big God. You believe you serve a mighty God. Amen. No matter what confronts you, our God is bigger. Amen and amen than anything, than any mountain. God is bigger than any valley. Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen? God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. We have a video service today. The title is the 21st century gospel, which was preached last year, May, on the 10th of May, 2020. God bless you. to the book of St. Luke the 17th chapter and then Revelations chapter 8 I already have my marker on Luke the 17th chapter I've had it on that chapter for quite some time and it's still there so just one verse out of it verse 30 from Luke 17 um, he said even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed 
And then um, Revelations, um, the eighth chapter, and only the first verse. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and the hearing as well. Even in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you wherever you are. Please take your seats. And um, I'd first of all like to make um, a little comment on Brother Joe's message last Sunday. I was so excited uh, when he was speaking um, because he was hitting the nail right on the head. And I'm sure that um, all of you were blessed wherever you were when um, Brother Joe's message went forth. Oh, how we thank God. Let's praise the Lord and, and thank him for such, such a delivery. Did he preach? Yes, sir. I believe he preached. Amen. So, um, my title today is the 21st century gospel. And um, I've been thinking all week about what is the driving force or what should be the driving force of our faith um, in these troublous times. And um, we need to re-emphasize what should undergird our faith. The first century believers had something that set them ablaze over against the great religious and political persecution that went on in their day. Something was their driving force. And so in our age, in this 21st century that we are, there has to be something that is the driving force, something that can stand what is going on, the times in which we live, because what is in the world today is all the ages put together, is a culmination of all the evils that has gone on in the world down through the seven church ages. And so, the question that I ask myself is, are we that generation that Brother Branham mentioned that he had wanted to see that generation that will receive the body change? Are we that generation? I'd like to read from, is this a sign of the end, 1962, where he says, where are we at, sirs? What's all of this about? He said, um, the other angels was messengers, men of the earth. But this angel, this said to the angel of the church of Laodicea, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, messengers of the earth. All these seven churches messengers, messengers of the earth, men, messengers, prophets, and so forth, to the church. But this one didn't come from the earth. The angel of Revelation 10, 1, the mighty angel um, who had the rainbow around him. He come down from heaven because the mystery is all finished. And when the mystery is finished, the angel said, Time shall be no more. And seven thunders throwed their voices out. What if it is something to let us know how to enter into the rapturing faith? Is it? And so the coming down, the prophet is saying here that the coming down of this angel is supposed to trigger something. It's supposed to trigger how to enter into rapturing faith. Will we run and leap over walls? And I'm sure you know that this running and leaping over walls is not literal walls, but he's speaking about dimensional uh, 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 leaping. We leap, jump from one dimension to the other. We'll be standing here, we'll not be here. Praise God. Is there something fixing to happen? And these old, marred, vile bodies are going to be changed? Can I live to see it? Oh, Lord. Listen to him carefully. Oh, my. Can I live to see it? 
Is it so close that I'll see it? And I'm talking about this is like 57 years ago. Is this the generation? Praise the Lord. Says my brethren, what time is it? Where are we at? And so, um, are we that generation that the prophet was looking for? Are we the people? Is it that we've missed something? Praise the Lord. I believe we should wake up. We should wake up and then um, re-emphasize what is the driving force of our faith in the face of what is happening in the world today. Praise the Lord. There's utter confusion in the world. And there's no clear path. There's no clear way um, that the people foresee in the immediate future. And so they're talking about recovery in two years' time and so on and so forth. Praise God. But we have a driving force. The standard that has been lifted in our age is so much higher than what is happening in the world today. That's the way God does it all the time. The standard he raises is much, much more greater in magnitude than what comes forth in the world. Praise the Lord. So today, um, I want to go back on uh, scriptures, which is um, Luke 17, and um, some of the scriptures that we've been, you know, occupied with for the past few days, scriptures that pertain to our day, and our focus will be on Luke 17, 30, and I believe it's a great mystery. Praise the Lord. The mystery there is inexhaustible. We will start, we will never finish. Praise God. And you can preach on it over and over and over and over. Praise the Lord. But it's a great mystery. But I want us today to look a little bit at the immense significance of the background before these scriptures could come to fulfillment. There's a, a whole background to this thing. Praise God. And as I've always said, Luke 17.30 is a consummate scripture, but have we come to the full realization? Praise God. Because if we don't come to a realization of Luke 17.30, there cannot be rapture in condition. We must come to the full realization of, of, of Luke 17.30 and then we can move into rapturing condition. Because it's the apprehension of this mystery that qualifies you for a change of the body. Praise the Lord. It's not so much on the days of Noah because the days of Noah, Brother Branham says, some heavenly um, objects moved and shifted and then when that happened the you know you know it began to rain and then there was an overflow and the whole world was inundated praise the Lord and God has sent his prophet Noah amen but it's more to do with the days of of Sodom praise God when God's great intention or his great mystic secret on the earth praise God was foreshadowed in the dust of this earth. That's what it is. So it is the apprehension of this mystery that qualifies you for the change of the body. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, Abraham and Sarah's change depended so much on the apprehension of this mystery. That's why even though three men came, Abraham saw three men coming, and yet he said, my Lord. Praise God, because he apprehended, he comprehended, he understood, he got a revelation. Lot saw two men come in and he said, my lords, praise God, amen. Because the apprehension of this mystery is what puts you into kingdom atmosphere for change. Praise God, hallelujah. He put Abraham and Sarah into this atmosphere, into this kingdom atmosphere, and a little later, God came down in secret to change their physical bodies. Praise God. Amen. We can go back to 2,000 years ago or so and say the apostles also depended so much on this revelation for change. Praise God. 
Oh, how we have to be on fire. Knowing what God has done in our age. Knowing what God has achieved in our age. How we have to be on fire. There has to be a fire burning in our souls. Hallelujah. Praise God. That will give the church an upliftment. Hallelujah. That will put the church in rapturing condition. Amen. So the apostles also depended, so the disciples also depended so much on this revelation for their change to come. Praise God. And when you go back, you follow the scriptures, we can see what their message was. Now listen to how they put it, their message. Listen to how they put it in the book of Acts chapter 2 and the 22nd verse through 24. Listen to Peter speaking. He said, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Now listen, and which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Praise God. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly praise God he begins a man narrating what had taken place and then he comes with therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus that man who walked among you pray and God vindicated him by signs and wonders and miracles let the whole house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ Oh my Glory This was the faith of the fathers That God was in a man Hallelujah Approved of God Authenticated Proven Demonstrated by God Hallelujah And thereafter made him Lord Made him Lord and Christ That he is the son of God that he is God in Christ. What a message. It was a revolutionary message. Praise God. Amen. Can you imagine the Jewish fathers? How it was shocking to them. How it was startling to them. Oh my God. Amen. It was a revolutionary message. It was a driving force of the church down through the book of Acts. Amen. Praise God. The immensity of this revelation, amen, was so profound that it shook the whole of Israel. It shook the nations around. Praise God. And this became the driving force. Hallelujah. This simple revelation is what set them ablaze. Hallelujah. It was an incendiary message. Oh my, it was a fiery message. And he gave them authority and he gave them unbounded zeal. Hallelujah. And nothing could stop them. That God had come down and God was in that man, Jesus. And God had approved of him. And God, hallelujah, had vindicated him. Oh my. Praise God. Nothing could stop them. Amen. Persecution could not stop them. Death could not stop them. The arenas full of lions could not stop them even unto death yes, hallelujah Amen. this simple revelation set them ablaze they sold all they had hallelujah why because God had come down in a man called Christ Jesus praise God hallelujah oh my this is what set them ablaze this is what set them on fire praise God Amen Oh, my church, can you imagine? Praise God. 
if you had gone as an inquirer to ask them what is your driving force praise God what is it that moves you hallelujah they would have told you that there was a man named Jesus praise God who lived among you and you crucified him praise God but after he was crucified and died he rose again and is now seated on the right hand of God and that he is Lord and he is Christ they have seen God Almighty manifested in his son they seen him die they seen him risen praise God and they seen him made Lord and Christ and it set them ablaze in the first century oh hallelujah that that man finally is the son of God that God was manifested in Christ what a message hallelujah and God vindicated them God was behind them with signs and wonders and miracles God vindicated it hallelujah praise God this was their message hallelujah the Jews and the Samaritans had received him with a messianic sign but the messianic sign was never performed before the Gentiles praise God the Jews received this messianic sign example as Philip found Nathaniel brought him amen and he told him before Philip called you hallelujah amen I saw you sitting under the tree oh my hallelujah that was a messianic sign of that day to the Jews and then the Samaritan woman hallelujah praise God he said go bring your husband hallelujah glory to God amen he said I have not he said you've spoken the truth you've had five and the one you're living with is not your husband. He said, I know Messiah coming. Hallelujah. And when he comes, he will show us the sign. Hallelujah. That was revealed, amen, to the Samaritan. Praise God. But the, to the Greeks or to the Gentiles, it was never revealed. To the Roman or, or centurion, praise God, was just speak the word. Hallelujah. I'm a man of authority. And I know you are a man of authority. That sign of the Messiah was not revealed or performed before the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus told the Greeks, Amen. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground, Amen. If it, it abideth alone. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the Gentiles were not to know him in the form that he was at that time in the form of the son of man they were not to know him in that form but the gentiles were to know him in another form for two thousand years as the son of god oh you understand me are you following me hallelujah the gentiles were to know him hallelujah in the form of the son of god amen for two thousand years for seven church ages as the son of god hallelujah so that was a form in which he was when he revealed himself to Paul. Hallelujah. Paul did not meet the Son of Man. Paul did not see the Son of Man. But Paul met him in the supernatural light. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute them, the, the, the believers. And Paul was struck down by the great blazing light brighter than the sun hallelujah amen the light that shone on him hallelujah praise God eventually began to shine in in Paul hallelujah glory to God amen listen to him in Galatians 1 15 he said but when he pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood to reveal his son in me praise God which son hallelujah the son of God that blazing light that supernatural light praise God that struck him down soon entered into Paul and Paul had to reveal the Son of God to the people. Paul had to manifest the Son of God to the people. Praise God. Now listen to Brother Branham on uh, Christ is a mystery of God revealed. 1963. 
Now listen, he said, did you notice? Paul never knew Jesus physically. Paul never knew him. The only way that Paul knew him was by a revelation, by a vision. Is that right? Paul only knew Jesus by the revelation just like Peter did. Peter, oh my, confess that thou art the son of the living God. Peter has seen him in flesh, but he didn't know him by flesh. Because Jesus said so. Flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. Even my own life didn't reveal it to you. But my Father which is in heaven has revealed a thing to you that he is the word of God. And upon this rock I will build my church. Peter didn't know him by flesh. Man walked and handled him and everything else. Paul had something greater than any of the apostles did. See? Praise God. Brother Branham somewhere even said, put all the apostles put together. Hallelujah. Paul had greater, greater revelation than all the apostles put together. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Amen. Well, they said, we've, I've got more of a revelation than you, Paul. Because, you know, I walked with him. I went fishing with him. One day, I heard him talk. He sat in a boat with me and actually told me, let's over, go over there here and fish in this place. And we'll get more fish. And we did it. We seen him do things. But Paul saw him after he was dead, buried rose again and expressed himself in the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. Oh my, Paul's Jesus was the spiritual supernatural light. Paul's Jesus was not the man that walked on the shores of Galilee. But Paul's Jesus was a supernatural light. Paul being a Jew would never have called that Lord unless he had seen the expression and he was back the same yesterday today uh, the same yesterday and forever he said paul in other words i am the same god today that i was yesterday here i am in the same light the pillar of fire that moses stuck to in the burning bush no wonder he could separate the law from grace over in the book of hebrews he met that same pillar of fire he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest and here he is today in the same manner by the same pillar of fire expressing himself and vindicating himself revealing the mystery of God that's been hit since the foundation of the world oh my this is the God that Paul proclaimed to the Gentiles he proclaimed the son of God this was a central focus a man of Paul's revelation that God Almighty was in Christ. Right. Hallelujah! And after his death, burial, resurrection, praise God. Here he is the Son of God. Here he is the supernatural light. Here he is in the pillar of fire. What a mystery. What a revelation. Praise God. But I want us to go one step further and come to our day. Remember, Paul was given to the Gentiles as their first messenger and apostle. And so we can look at Paul and we can look at the seventh church messenger. Hallelujah. And we will see that these two messengers operated under different commissions. Hallelujah. Even though they were commissioned by the same God, they were commissioned hallelujah differently amen and so on a message called the trial 1964 oh my listen to the prophet here he said he revealed him, himself as son of God son of God the Holy Ghost baptized the Pentecostal church and the churches through down through has brought down signs, wonders, miracles, like he did. They seen God in great visions and, and everything. Now listen carefully. Let me repeat. Paragraph 251, he said, He has revealed himself as Son of God. Son of God. The Holy Ghost baptized the Pentecostal church. 
and the churches down through down through the ages right has brought down signs and wonders and miracles like he did they seen God in great vision and everything paragraph 252 but never has the church never has the church ever seen the Son of God manifested in human flesh that would reveal the thoughts that's in the heart till this age oh man you mean to tell me not even Paul no yes not even Paul not in Arrhenius not in Martin not in Luther not in Wesley not in the Pentecostals they had the anointing of the Son of God Hallelujah! And they work signs and wonders and miracles. But never has the church ever seen the Son of God manifested in human flesh that would reveal the thoughts that's in the heart till this age. And that was the age that seen Sodom burn and the promised son return. How this revelation ought to put us on fire. Oh my praise god hallelujah yes sir never has a church amen not even in paul glory to god so paul operated under the power of the son of god as his commission amen but malachi 4 was to operate under the commission of the son of man that was his calling that was his commission praise god and so the difference between Paul and Malachi 4, the seventh church age messenger, is Luke 1730. Do you see, church? That's the difference between Paul and Malachi 4. Hallelujah. It's Luke 1730. Praise God. Now let's get on with it. Luke 1730 is specific and yet comprehensive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Specific because it's to one man. Comprehensive because there's a whole background to it. Many things happen down through some church ages before it all gathers up into Luke 1730. Do you understand? And so recognition and comprehension of this is what qualifies you in this age for the marriage of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, let's look a little bit at Paul's ministry and what he preached in the first century. Amen. Amen. And I'll read a few scriptures. There are many more. When you go back, you can research on it. Hallelujah. Now, in Acts 8, 36 through 37, this is what uh, is written there. And as they went out on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch, this is Philip, said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God hallelujah that was the faith of the fathers amen then Acts chapter 9 verse 19 through 20 and when he had received meat he was strengthened then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. That was Paul's, amen, preaching. That was what he was focused upon. Then I'll give you another one. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19 through 20. Amen. For the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus was not yea and nay but in him was yea for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us amen, amen. read another one Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me by the faith of the Son of God. Hallelujah. So you see the emphasis was on the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Romans 1, 
uh, verse 3 and 4 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead declared to be what? the son of God Amen. Amen. Praise God. And even in Ephesians 4, praise God, when Paul was speaking about the fivefold ministry, praise God, he eventually brings the fivefold ministry to the knowledge of the Son of God, to catch a revelation, praise God, of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. That was the faith of the fathers. Amen. But you and I, in this age, we are supposed to come to the comprehension of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Glory. The scriptures must meet scriptures. Praise God. And so Luke 17, 30 is a great mystery and it has to do with the seventh seal. And I'm going to prove it to you that it has to do with the seventh seal. The prophet said so. Hallelujah. It's specific to one man. Praise God. So let's look at some seventh seal mystery quotes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, Brother Branham said on Christ is a mystery. Sorry, I'm sorry, the other one. Christ is revealed in his own word. Uh, 1965, paragraph 141. He said, now, then he was made actu actually human flesh. That's Jesus. And dwelt among us. In the person of Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, he come in that form so he could die and went back into heaven. Right. Now in these last days, he has promised to manifest himself in the fullness again of his flesh and spirit. See, for as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now look at Sodom, how it's set and what taking place. And Jesus Christ being manifested in bodily form of his church today. Now, hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ being manifested in bodily form of his church today. So it's not Jesus' body, but it's the body of the church. Hallelujah. Glory. It's the flesh of the church. It's not the body of Jesus. Amen. But it's the body of the church. Oh my. Glory. Hallelujah. And he done exactly the same thing he done in sundry times and the times of his flesh upon the earth. And doing the same thing today because God in sundry times spoke to the fathers through the prophets in this last days through his son Jesus Christ. See? The son being revealed in the last days and God manifested in human flesh not Jesus flesh in human flesh setting just before Sodom's destruction hallelujah so God has manifested himself in the flesh of his church somebody say amen praise God amen now let's read a few more so that it, it, you can come, you can get it. So it's not like he said one thing and he never said it again. So let's read it. He knew exactly what he was saying because he was a prophet. So this week I've been thinking about the loneliness of the prophet. He alone knew what he was saying in his day and no one knew what he was saying. Hallelujah! And he was walking among the people and they didn't know what was going on. Glory that God had manifest himself in the flesh of his church. Oh, brother. Glory. Well, but he knew that a generation was coming that would comprehend this. And I believe this is the day. This is the hour. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. So listen. Now, on a message called Christ is identified uh, the same in all generations uh, in 1964. He said, Abraham called him Elohim. That was God. Elohim is a self-existent one. See, the all-sufficient self-existing in the beginning. Take that word 
God. Look at it back there. Same translated, the same thing. Elohim. Pray Genesis 18. It was Elohim. It was God. There was Elohim manifested in flesh that had ate the flesh of a calf, drinking the milk from the cow and its bread. Oh man. And said, talking to Abraham. Hallelujah. And Abraham standing there and enjoying his own hospitality with the mighty king, with Elohim, with Melchizedek, sitting right there. And Abraham knew that he could discern what was in Sarah's thoughts back there. And that's the reason he knew that was Elohim. Jesus said, notice, in the days when the Son of Man shall be revealed, uh, in the, uh, being revealed in the last days, it will be like it was in the days of Sodom. Now listen again. God manifested in his church. The human beings. Which human beings? It wasn't Oral Rabbit. It wasn't Billy Graham. It was him. God manifested in his church. And his church was standing right there. Revealing. Oh my. Revealing himself. See in human flesh. Like he was then. Oh my. Glory. All right. So we are going deeper. Are you ready for more? My glory. Hallelujah. The denominations don't have nothing to give you. Glory. The Pentecostals don't have it, anything to give you. But we have an end time message. And God had come down in our age. Glory. So let's go on. Praise God. When their eyes were opened, they knew him. 1964 he said the son of man would be revealed in the last days as it was at Sodom Lord you never mentioned about Noah you never mentioned that you'll be revealed at Noah's time but said as it was at Sodom when the son of man is revealed Lord it was in prayer let Bible readers here tonight see the truth let them see that Malachi 4, that this anointing is supposed to come and to restore back again the fat faith that the fathers once seen. The revelation of God in Christ. That is the faith of the fathers. Praise God. But he didn't end there. He said, let them see Malachi 4, that this anointing is supposed to come and to restore back again that faith that the fathers once seen the revelation of God in Christ but he doesn't end there praise God so Malachi 4 first is to take us back restore us to the faith of the fathers apostolic fathers Amen. Peter, James, John, Paul hallelujah is to take us back to that the faith of the fathers Malachi 4 is supposed to do that Praise God. And what was that revelation? God was in Christ. Now, listen, now, may they see the revelation of God in human beings. Oh, my. Which human beings? He's talking about the church. And the church was standing there himself. Hallelujah. Christ manifested in the flesh of his church walking among us hallelujah walking among us yes he that was him standing there christ was in him just as god was in christ this is not christ's body this is not jesus's physical body praise god but god was in the flesh of his church Lord. amen so this is the faith of the children the revelation of God in Christ was the faith of the fathers the revelation of Christ in his church is the faith of the children hallelujah glory praise God amen yes sir do you see it are you following me yes sir so the faith of the fathers 
is a revelation of God in Christ. But the rapturing faith is a revelation of Christ in the flesh of his church. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. This puts you under the anointing as he put Abraham and Sarah Amen. under that anointing of God right. in flesh. Amen. But this time the flesh is his church. Right. <laughs> oh my. Amen. Praise God. The faith of the fathers is a revelation of God in Christ. Rapturing faith is a revelation of Christ in the church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why he said on a message, um, church age book, he said, uh, we all know it, page 3 to 7, that the messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelation 10, 7. The messenger of 1 and 2 right. is going to do two things. Right. According to Malachi 4, right. praise God, he will turn the house of the children to the fathers. You get it? Yes, Hallelujah. You turn them back to the faith of the fathers. And what is the faith of the fathers? The faith of the fathers was that God had come into Christ. Amen. Amen. Two, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelation 10, which are the revelations contained in the seven seals. It will be these divinely revealed mystery truths that literally turn the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers. Amen. Hallelujah. And so our anointing and our power will be under this ministry. Will be under the commission of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So the church, amen, has displayed Christ in fullness to the public. Christ displayed God Almighty in fullness to the public. And that was the faith of the fathers. Amen. But in our age, Amen. Christ had been displayed, had been manifested in fullness in his church Amen. to the public. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my. Okay. Hallelujah. Now we're going to see how the seventh seal is connected to this. Amen. We're going to see. Praise God. Amen. We're going to see it. So on the seventh seal, the prophet said when the seals broke, the seventh seal broke, he said no angels singing, no praises, no altar service, no nothing. There was silence, hush, deadly silence in heaven for a half hour. But the host of heaven <clears throat> was silent for this half hour. My when this seventh seal mystery in the book of redemption was broke open, think of it, but it's broke. The lamb breaks it. You know what? They were all by it. They were in a state of shock. It's like you just can't fathom the greatness, the immensity of this mystery. Hallelujah. Glory. They didn't know it. I believe they didn't know it. There it was. They just stopped. Why? Why? What is it? Mine. As we go on, he says, And now, as certain as I stand in the platform tonight, tonight, I had the revelation that revealed. It's a threefold manner that I'll speak to you by God's help of a fold of it and let go over the first here is a revelation to begin. I want to tell you what it is. What happens is that those seven thunders that he heard thunder and was forbidden to write, that's where the mystery is laying behind those seven consecutive thunders rolling out. Mine. He said it's a threefold manner. Praise God. <clears throat> now, paragraph five, uh, page, uh, page 564, the old one, the old version. He said, and in Sabino Kenyon, he said, this is the third pole. That this great hidden mystery, which was broke open in heaven, which made all the angels hush, which made the angels awed by it, which put the angels in shock for the space of half an hour, had to do with the man here on the earth. Oh, man. Hey. Hey. He said, this is the third pool. And there's three great things that goes with the three. 
and one unfolded today or yesterday yesterday the other one unfolded today and there's one thing that i cannot interpret because it's an unknown language praise god amen what is that third thing we'll find out what it is but i, I was standing right there and look right straight at it and this is the third pool coming up and the holy spirit of god oh my that's the reason all heaven was silent it had to do with one man standing here how can a presbyterian understand this how can a pentecostal understand this they can never understand this but it's the apprehension of this mystery that puts the bride in rapturing condition hallelujah glory praise god amen yes sir now my my third quote from from the seventh century says now there is a whole earth to be purged there will be um such a thing that the moon uh and, and all that shall be purged now, let me go on to the next uh paragraph he said now do you notice on the opening of the seventh seal, it's also in a threefold mystery. He said, this one I have will speak and have spoke. That is a mystery of the seven thunders. The seven thunders in heaven will unfold this mystery. It will be right at the coming of Christ. Because Christ said no one knew when he would return. Do you get the connection? Hallelujah. So now we're going to see that the seventh seal mystery revealed has three things to it it has a backward look at what has been achieved in the first century then it has a present tense hallelujah revelation on what has been achieved and then it has it has an immediate future revelation to show what is coming up hallelujah backwards present and future and that future is you yeah. that future is oh my god yeah. hallelujah yeah. praise god so let's go on to the seventh seal now the date the date for the seventh seal that was preached on 24th march 1963 praise god watch the date Hallelujah, you're going to see something unfold. He said it's threefold manner, threefold mystery, but he never mentioned what it was. Praise God. And this is March 24th, 1963. Exactly four months later. July the 24th, 1963. Exactly four months later. He says on God doesn't call man to judgment without first warning him. In 1963. He said, and I thought, after having the healing service last Sunday, then maybe this Sunday, if we just take the teaching and bring it right up and show what the time that we are, we are at. What's the threefold purpose of God's great plan since the foundation of the world and bringing it down to today. So he takes the seventh seal praise God, a threefold mystery, the threefold manner, and then he speaks here about it, and he says it's been brought down to today. Hallelujah. The threefold plan of God, the plan, and I'm working on the second part. Oh my! I'm working on the second part now, getting the scriptures out. So he had the first part sorted out. All the scriptures laid there. He was now working on the second part and getting the scriptures out and hunting them out and placing them. What a lonely prophet. How he was so lonely. One man way ahead of his time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, the first part of it is the revelation of God in Christ. The second part of it is the revelation of Christ in the church. Remember that. The prophet's day. Then the third part is the unknown language. Hallelujah. Then we go to 
Four days later, after this message, God uh, warning the judgment, July 24th, four days later, which is July 28th, 1963, he now comes to bring out the scriptures that reveal what was revealed in the seventh seal. And the message is titled, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, wherever you are. He said now, part of 105, God had a purpose and a hidden mystery. And that's what I want to speak on to the church this morning, the hidden mystery of God that he had in his mind before the world ever began. And how that it's unfolded itself right down to this present hour that we are living in. This is the prophet speaking on July 28th, 1963. It's unfolded to this very hour in his day. Oh my. Then you understand clearly. Then you see, I believe, what is being done. Part of 107. He has showed or revealed it in every type that's in the Bible. Therefore, the entire Bible is the revelation of God's mystery in Christ. The entire Bible is an expression of one goal that God had. One, one, one. What is that one goal? One goal that God had. One purpose. That one goal is why heaven was silent. That one goal is why the angels were, ha were awed. That one goal is why the angels were so shocked and they stopped worshiping, they stopped, oh my, that one goal. Hallelujah. He wanted to achieve the entire Bible. And all the acts of the believers in the Bible has been a type and expressing what God's great goal is. And now in this last day, he has revealed it and shows it. And God's help, well, we'll see it right here this morning, what the Lord has in his mind all along and has expressed it. He had this in his mind in Genesis. He had the same thing in his mind in Exodus. He had the same thing in mind, oh my, every time, amen. Leviticus and all the histories and all the prophets and all and so on. He had this thing on his mind. But it unfolded itself to our day. Amen. amen. Praise God. He goes on paragraph 140. Now God has had a threefold purpose in this great mystery secret. Praise God. Amen. Now, this message is an extension of the seventh seal. You must get that. It's an extension. Notice, God has had a threefold purpose in this great mystery secret. God, in his great mystery secret that he had before the world began, he has got a threefold purpose in it. And now, what we want to go upon this morning is, what is that threefold purpose? See, I believe by the help of God who is present, he will show it to us. Now, if you have this threefold purpose, we want to find out what is this threefold purpose. First, part of 154. First, to express himself completely God in Christ. Faith of the fathers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Secondly, now you see, he's not only giving us faith of the fathers. He's not only taking us back to the faith of the fathers. Hallelujah. But he's adding something more. Oh my glory. Second, to have the preeminences in his church. And we know his church. As he was speaking, that was the church standing there. Hallelujah. Walking amongst them. The church, oh my. Which was tabernacling the fullness of God. The fullness of the Godhead. To have the preeminences by this in his church which is his body the bride till he could have the preeminence yeah. to express himself through them yeah. through him yeah. oh my 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 hallelujah. hallelujah praise God amen and thirdly to restore the kingdom to its rightfully rightly position this is what flew across in an unknown language that fell by sin by the first Adam back to where he walked in the cool of the evening with his people, talked with them, fellowship with them. Praise God. Yeah. Now paragraph 621, it's a revelation. It's as eternal as God's word is eternal. Look, but the threefold purpose of God's mystery, great mystery is revealed. God manifested in Christ. Faith of the fathers. 
God manifested in the church. Hallelujah. In the church. And the church was standing there. Hallelujah. My, my, my. And you could hardly tell the difference between the bridegroom and the church. Hallelujah. They were the same thing. Hallelujah. With the exception of the corporal body. The same signs. The same wonders. The same manifestation. Hallelujah. Amen. God manifested in Christ. Christ manifested in the church in order to redeem lost Eve back to the original condition in the Garden of Eden. That is your ministry. Hallelujah. That is our ministry. The original condition. What is the original condition? We will talk about that later. Hallelujah. Now, what is this mystery? What is this seven seal mystery that had to do with a man on the earth? Which he calls his third pool. What is that mystery? What is it? What is Christ the mystery of God? What, what, what is this great mystic secret that God had at the back part of his mind? What is it that he's trying to achieve? Now listen, paragraph 474. He says, this is God's great mystery of love expressed. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. That God and man became one. See? Yeah. Became one when? In Jesus. The whole thing is God and man one. God and man was one there and God and, and man is one here. And he was standing there. The church. Hey. See? What is it? Being filled with the spirit. Him having the preeminences. That was God's achievement. Oh my. And that's God's purpose to do that. That he might be in Christ. Amen. And Christ in us. And all of us together. One. The Holy Spirit the same thing. It revealed it to Christ. Reveals it here. The supernatural creative power. Oh my. The third pole. Oh my. Hallelujah. This is the conclusion of Christ, the mystery of God revealed. Amen. Amen. That God and man, one, back there in Jesus, faith of the fathers. This is what set them on fire. This is what set them ablaze. And God and man today as one, God in his church. And his church was standing there. Hallelujah. Amen. My. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, sir. You may see that. So God was in Christ Jesus. God was in Christ first fold. And then Christ was in the church. Hallelujah. Christ in his church. And his church was standing there. The flesh of his church was standing there. Hallelujah. And then redeemed Eve back to the original condition in Eden, the, the third pole, the bride's third pole. Hallelujah! This is what flew across in unknown language. But on Christ the mystery, he places it in the scriptures. Hallelujah! Amen! Not something to come in the millennium, but something to take place now. Hallelujah! This is the day. This is the hour. Unknown language. You are a mystery. You are a mystery. You are a mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. You may see that. Praise God. So Luke 1730 is a consummate scripture, is a gathering up of God's mystery plan, and it's a picture of what the seventh seal contains. What God has been trying to do down through the ages. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you must have a deep apprehension of this. Amen. The first century, God had come in his son, Christ Jesus. The 21st century, Christ has come in the flesh of his church. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. And so Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifested in the church. Did you get it? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit manifested in the church. Or we can put it this way. The Father, the Son, and the church. Hallelujah. The church in its perfection that God had bodily in the church. The bow of man. Hallelujah. The Father covering both the Son and the church, which is his bride. Do you get it? The Father, the Son, the church. The church in its perfection. Hallelujah. That God had bodily in the church. Praise God. This is an upliftment. He takes the church and he pulls the church into the Godhead as part of the Godhead. Hallelujah. By the baptism of the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost itself. Oh my. Praise God. Yes sir. Now listen. The super sign. 1963. Paragraph 105. He said everybody is wanting a sign. We are supposed to look for signs. That's right. Religious. Scriptural signs. Or not religious. Bible, Bible signs. Everyone's going to look for a sign. And they know this will be a super day. God seen the end from the beginning. So he said, I'll give them a, su a sign, a super sign. I'll give them an eternal sign. Amen. A sign that is not reversible. A sign that cannot be compromised. I'll give them one that will never fail and never pass away. Amen. They want a sign, so I'm going to give them one. A super sign. He didn't come in the, heart, in, the Polish, in the Polish of the world the way they expected him to come. But what did he say? A virgin shall conceive. Amen. That was a sign. That was a super sign. A virgin shall conceive. Amen. A super sign. Not a natural sign, but a super sign. A virgin shall conceive. A supernatural sign. Supernatural. It was a super sign. For a virgin had never did it before. But she shall conceive. What was it to be? His name shall be called Emmanuel. How will it be? God and man will become one. The super sign. Oh God. If the world could only see that. That God and man are one. The super sign was that. First man that God will come into. All that God was he poured into Christ. And all that Christ was, he is poured into the church. Super sign. God and man together. That was to be the super sign of the last day. When the entire Bible was to be fulfilled in the last days. Oh my. Praise God. Paragraph 167. Now listen. Listen. Listen to it. Amen. But yet we find in the Bible that the last sign before the promised son arrived, it was a super sign. Hallelujah. God will be in a man. God will be in the flesh of his church. As he was then before the promised son arrives, that super sign will come on the earth again. I declare to you, listen to him. Praise God. Listen, hallelujah. I declare to you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, it's on earth now. Now. Hallelujah. And not only that, but it's right here among us tonight. The Holy Ghost. Oh. Glory. Glory. This is the grand mystery of the entire Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. This is why the angels were shocked. This is why the angels were awed. Hallelujah. God had finally achieved what he set out to do. Praise God. The Holy Ghost. God's super sign. The resurrected Jesus Christ. It cannot fail. It's an eternal sign. It can never be changed. It's irrevocable. Heaven and earth will pass away. But that will never change. It's an eternal sign. Everlasting sign. God manifested in human flesh. Which flesh? His flesh. God made himself known in human flesh. Oh my. Friends. The rejection of this mystery is the reason why by the denominations they rejected it is the reason why we are where we are today praise God in the days of the apostles 
and disciples. It took about it took about 40 years from AD 33 to AD 70, close to 40 years, for the judgment, amen, to fall or to strike because of the rejection of the first fall of this mystery. Amen. Over 40 years, 37 years. And now it's taken about 55 years from 1965. Praise God, or 57, it takes from 63 for the world to start having a temporary major judgment. It's temporal. Praise God. More is to follow. Hallelujah. But this is to awaken us and to set our hearts ablaze. Amen. Put us on fire. Glory. Now you may be seated. By, let me give you three points here. By this achievement of God fully bottled up in one man, Luke 17, 30, he's brought to pass a celestial vision that God had before the world began. Yeah. Number two, Hallelujah. by the manifestation of this mystery, yeah. the bridegroom is married to the bride yeah. awaiting the marriage supper. Yeah. Number three, yeah. praise God, by fulfilling this mystery in one man, God has finished his plan for the ages for the entire church. Yeah. It's finished. Yeah. It's finished. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It means that the church has come to a perfection. Yeah. It means that a mission has been accomplished. Yeah. A mission that God embarked yeah. upon has been accomplished. Yeah. Praise God. It also means yeah. it also means that it's an unveiling yeah. of a grand project yeah. that God started yeah. before the foundation of the world. Yeah. And he finishes up in our age. Oh my. Listen. Hallelujah. Who is this Melchizedek? Paragraph 42. Notice. Like the sculptor, he hides with a mask over it. That's what God has done to this age. It's been hid. All these things have been hid. And it's supposed to be revealed in this age. Now the Bible says that will be they'll be revealed in a lot of times. It's like a sculptor keeping his piece of work all covered up until the time he takes the mask off of it and there it is. Amen. And that's what the Bible has been. Amen. It's been a work of God that's been covered up and it's been hid since the foundation of the world Hallelujah. and it's sevenfold Amen. mystery. And God promised in this day at the age of this Laodicea church he would take the mask off of hey. the whole thing. Amen. Amen. And we could see it. What a glorious thing. Paragraph 43. God and Morphe masked in the pillar of fire. God and Morphe in a man called Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith of the fathers. God and Morphe in his church. He's not talking about the general church. He's not talking about Oral Roberts. He's not talking about, amen, Billy Graham and uh, Tommy Osborne. He's talking about his ministry. He's talking about himself. His body was the body of the church. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God with us. God in us. The condescending of God. There, up there, holy no one could touch him. He settled upon the mountain. Even the animal touched the mountain had to die. And then God come down and change his tent. And come down and live with us. Become one of us. And we beheld him. The Bible said, First Timothy 3.16. Without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. Hand over with hands. God ate meat. God drank water. God slept. God cried. He was one of us. Beautifully typed in the Bible. That was God above us. God with us. Now. Today. 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 As he was speaking now. It's God in us. The Holy Spirit. Not the third person. The same person. The same God. Hallelujah. That appeared to Abraham. Was standing there to Abraham. The same God. That appeared to the disciples. Amen. In their day. The same God standing here in our day. Fully manifested. In the body of his church. Praise God. Amen. Amen. There's always a one-man ministry. That's mystery. Right. There's always a one-man mystery. Right. The Bible says that by one man, Adam, sin entered into every man. Right. By one man. That's a one-man mystery. By one man, Jesus, hey. the free gift of hey. grace, hey. passed on to hey. many. Hey. By one man, John, on the Isle of Patmos, hey. an entire bride was represented. Right. 
by one man Elijah on Mount Transfiguration, the raptured saints are represented. By one man Moses on Transfiguration Mountain, the resurrection saints are represented. By one man David slaying Goliath, the whole Israel had won the battle. Oh, my, 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 my. Praise God. Now, oh my, hallelujah. Glory, church. You have no idea the way God sees it. This is how God sees it. This is how God had achieved, amen, his mission, his purpose. Hallelujah. Now listen, how God had to accomplish this in the 20th century. How he had to accomplish Luke 17, 30 in the last days, in the last day of the Son of Man. Number one, God put a body under close guard and protection by the pillar of fire from birth to the end that that body will be a prophet without blemish a prophet hallelujah number two God put that body under a Nazarite vow not to drink not to smoke or live immorally you and I have not been given that praise God amen hallelujah you and I were not given that but this body had to be preserved this body had to be protected because God was going to use it to bring to pass Luke 17 30 which is the mystic secret of God amen so he picked up a gun to shoot himself he points the gun at his head he pulls the trigger it refuses to fire hallelujah but when he throws it on the ground it fires hallelujah what was it God keeping that body under close guard protection hallelujah amen a high tension cable amen when he held it did not kill him hallelujah amen but he fell to the ground God was determined to fulfill his celestial dream in our age Melchizedek was in close scrutiny of the dust he was going to use for the last day manifestation of the son of man hallelujah oh my praise God look at the three things in the prophet's life three major things three major elements in the prophet's life number one was that he had a Nazarite vow literally over his body because it was going to be the flesh body uh, to embody the logos to produce Luke 1730. Hallelujah. Number two, suffering. God had to let him go through so much rejection, so much suffering and isolation. One man alone living in the world where they never understood him. Hallelujah, praise God. And finally brought him to a violent death. As other prophets, all prophets suffer violent death. Jesus died, they crucified him. John the Baptist was beheaded. Hallelujah. If you are living in John the Baptist, then would you say, well, the way he died, praise God, shows he's not a man of God? No. Or Paul, they beheaded him. Would you say Paul was not a man of God? No. Major prophets died violently. Amen. So eventually, he suffered and came to a violent death as other prophets. Number three, humbleness. He was humble. There was nothing for him to brag about. No education. No wealthy background. No prestigious background. No seminary training. God is not going to entrust the power of such magnitude to a novice of his characteristics. Never is he going to do that. Hallelujah. And so he went through many things. Praise God. And so we the bride must only preach Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, Revelations 10. Hallelujah. We must preach these scriptures. For it is only under these scriptures that we have our kingdom atmosphere. Hallelujah. Preach our promises under these scriptures, under this anointing. Never must we seek to project our individual ministry in isolation. There's no single man in the fivefold ministry 
that has a franchise on God. Hallelujah. It's by lack of understanding. That is why there's so much confusion and division. Praise God. So Paul was the embodiment of the ministry of the Son of God, which was the faith of the fathers. And Malachi 4 was the embodiment of the ministry of the Son of Man, which is the age of perfection, God's intention, God's mystery secret. Amen. So the bride is perfect already and has made herself ready. Not the way you think, but what God's larger framework declares. Hallelujah. His mission is accomplished. Amen. Let me read my last quote and I'm done. Praise God. My last quote, the fifth seal. Now listen. Hallelujah. Beyond the curtain of time, he said, and I said there and heard a voice, and then a voice said, you've been gathered to your people like Jacob was gathered to his people. And I said, all these people, are all these Branhams? He said, no, they are your converts to, to Christ. I looked around, and those real pretty woman run up, she looked real. It was all about the same. She threw her arm around me, and she said, oh, my precious brother. She looked at me. Mine, she looked like an angel. And she passed by, and that voice said, didn't you recognize her? I said, no, I didn't recognize. Said, you led her to Christ when she was past 90. Said, you know why? She thinks so much of you. I said, that pretty girl was past 90? Yeah, I said, she can never change no more now. That's the reason she says, precious brother. I thought, oh my, I was afraid of this. Why, these people are real? They wasn't going anywhere. They wasn't tired being there. And I said, well, why can I see Jesus? He said, now he will come Sunday and he'll come to you first. Then you will be judged. Said, so these people are your converts that you are led. And I said, you mean by being a leader that, that you judge me? He said, yes. And I said, does every leader have to be judged like that? I said, what about Paul? He said, you have to be judged with his. Amen. One man, Paul, will be judged with his group. If Paul goes in, his group goes in. Well, I said, if this group goes in, so will mine. If Paul's group goes in, so will my group. And you are his group. Because I preach exactly the same word. I said, where he baptized in Jesus' name, I did too. I preached and millions screamed out all at once and said, we are resting on that. Oh, church. We can only rest on Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30. We can rest on his message. It is a revolutionary message that God has moved into human flesh. From the flesh of Jesus, he's come down a bit lower and moved into human flesh and has lifted, amen, the church into the Godhead. Oh, man. Not that of Jesus. It's God's achievement. Praise God. This has to set the church on fire. You have to be on fire. This ought to set you ablaze with the fire of God. Oh, let's thank him and worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I will never forget what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. My, my. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. You know what? Glory. This place is too small for me to dance. Hallelujah. But wherever you are, rejoice. 
Hallelujah. God has accomplished his mission. You have already made it. Praise God. Amen. By one man made mystery. One man mystery. Praise God. Paul's group goes in. Malachi Paul's group goes in. So we already made it. That's why it was a preview of the bride. He saw the bride already. Hallelujah. So we are marching. Amen. Oh my. What a, what, a, what a wonderful thing it is. What a glorious mystery. Praise God. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Well, he brought me out of the merry claim. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, my Jesus, I'll never forget how you said. Clap your hands, church. Let's give him praise. Where are you brought? Oh my Jesus, I'll never forget No, never Hallelujah, sing it Jesus, I'll never forget What you've done for me Oh my Jesus, I'll never forget How you've set me free Jesus, I'll never forget How you brought me out Oh my Jesus, I'll never forget No, never well, what shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Sing it, church. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to sing is thank you, Lord. Sing it, thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Let's give God thanks and praise us. Amen for this end time message. Amen for sending us this Elijah prophet. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my thank you, Lord. All I had to say. Hallelujah. Well, what shall I say? What shall I say? Unto the Lord. All I had to say. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Sing a check, say thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. Well, all I have to say, ha. say thank you. Just 
say.